23 Oracle decks for 2023. I got you. And we're going to dive into all of them for your sign. So stay tuned. So we look at Oracle decks as metaphors. These are always energetic possibilities. And since we're doing it for a year ahead reading, that is our time frame of when these energies might be a poppin' in your life. I'll have links to all the decks in the description of the video in case you want to check them out for yourself. And if you find this content valuable, please do consider giving it a thumbs up and possibly also sharing it with those who may be interested in it. It would really help out the channel and hey, you'd be helping out a friend, giving them the heads up of the energies for their year ahead. All right, let's get into your reading. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Let's dive into the energies for you. We're going to start first with this beautiful crystal oracle deck. I think it's a good idea to have a crystal theme for your year ahead to help you manifest specific uh, goals and dreams. It's just fun. Who can resist crystals, right? All right, let's see what your crystal might be for your year ahead, Gemini. All right, let's see what we have here. Ooh, we have Azurite. Beautiful. Saturn, the number 30 on the card, and the keyword is discipline. All right, well, this is very interesting. Saturn in the sky will be transiting Pisces in 2023 as of March, and that is your 10th house of career. So this may have something to do with helping you have more discipline in your career pursuits, okay? So this may be a good, a good stone for you to get. This may help with your career success. Uh, in the year ahead, Gemini. Okay, very, very nice energies. Now, hello, Ariel. We have a lot of Oracle decks to get through. I'm not going to clarify every single one with tarot, um, but I will clarify some of them. It's just going to depend on what my intuition is telling me to clarify with the tarot. Okay, and Azurite is spelled A-Z-U-R-I-T-E. Beautiful. So Saturn, working with Saturn energies in the year ahead. Gemini. All right, let's see. Let's keep it going. So when Saturn transits our 10th house of career, uh, it is at the pinnacle of our charts and Saturn often brings rewards for hard work. So particularly for my Gemini risings, there could be some very interesting um, career uh, awards, fame, kudos, etc. to pay attention to if you've been doing the hard work. Because it's high visibility, the 10th house of your chart with Saturn there. All right, so let's see. Let's go on to our next deck, Gemini. Okay, what do we have here? My productivity stems from inspiration. Wow, we're talking about your career. When I focus on what brings me joy, my tasks be become effortless actions. Wow. Isn't this interesting? So the discipline of inspiration, I think that's a very, very interesting key going on here. You know, when we show up at a certain time every day to do a certain thing, like let's say you're a writer and you're trying to get a, your book written and stuff, you know, it is like that body memory. It's like going to the gym, same thing, right? Your muscle mem body memory, muscle memory, the same thing. It's like you show up at the same time, same place with the same cat, the same, same turtleneck, the same pen, whatever, whatever you do, the same notebook the same gym buddies, etc., and you show up and it's that discipline that provides the inspiration because you're there. You know, inspiration does need a container for it to fill. So the discipline provides the container. I think that's a very interesting concept for you to ponder <laughs> over, <laughs> over the next year ahead, Gemini. Okay, so let's see what else. We need to know. We're just, we just keep moving along through the decks. And like I said, I will stop and pause when I feel compelled to, to clarify with additional tarot. All right, let's take this one. We have the blame game. Uh-oh, what's going on here, Gemini? It's time to take ownership of the life you are creating. Okay, wow, isn't that interesting? Let's clarify this one. So, um... <laughs> You know, this may or may not be happening for you, but this may have happened already in the past. It doesn't mean it's going to be happening in the year ahead. But 
what I'm feeling here. It's more about you are going to be taking ownership of the life you are creating. And that's also stemming from your joy, your discipline, and the Saturn energy here. Okay, so there is something that maybe you are maturing and growing up about. I mean, we all go through cycles of maturation in our lives through different things. So you're going to be taking ownership of the life you are creating. And like I said, you could maybe have already learned a lesson about that. And you're ready to do that in the year ahead. You realize that it's not about outside forces. It's about inside forces, right? Your inside energy and taking ownership of whatever's going on for you to make positive changes in your life. Page of Cups and the Seven of Cups. Okay, again, Pisces energy showing up here with the Page of Cups. Tenth House of Career being once again highlighted with the Tarot. So um, you do have several new irons in the fire. You have several dreams. I call the Seven of Cups sometimes my bucket list card. You know, you have some, some new uh, ideas about your future that you want to pursue. It's time to start doing it. The Page of Cups. Pages are baby steps. It's time to start moving uh, in an inspired emotional direction toward your dreams. Even if it's just baby steps at first, it's fine. Okay, so there's it's with the cup showing up here this is very interesting so this this really is a lot about this emotional maturity that now needs to be tested out into the real world by taking action steps all right so like i said i feel like you've kind of up leveled and now you're going to be putting into motion this ownership of your life and this is also very creative energy as well this for me is cancer energy that is your second house of money and self-worth so it's important for you to honor yourself by investing in your dreams, by taking those first baby steps and inspired actions toward manifesting them. So if something hasn't worked out thus far, don't be looking outside to create blame or, you know, say whatever. That's why that happened. Just regroup, refocus and get back to yourself and start taking inspired action. OK. All right. Let's continue. All right. Next one. Gemini. Ariel is really concentrating. It's <laughs> very helpful right now. All right, let's see. Gemini, what we have for you. Okay. Oh, we got two. We only want one, please. All right, we'll take this one. Turn on your heart light. Ooh, Gemini. Turning on your heart light. Allow yourself in this moment to reflect on a time when you experienced love. Okay, so really feeling into that energy, that heart space, so that you can call in more love to your life. All right, so maybe let's clarify this one too. I feel like we need to. So maybe your heart light's been turned off for whatever reason. Okay, it's now time to turn it back on uh, in 2023. And the way you do that is by reflecting on a time when you experienced love, feeling good, feeling those positive emotions, opening your heart once again to call in something, something new based in again, like some sort of memory from the past when you experienced love, when you felt good, and that's going to help you open your heart to a new love, a new greater love coming to you from the world. And remember, this does not have to be romantic. This could be love from friends family, furry companions, the world at large, etc. But again, it's interesting. It's about your heart space. And we just had the page of cups, which is very much and seven of cups about emotional heart space energy also. So very interesting. All right. What do we got here? The tower. Wow. And the three of coins. Okay. So what this suggests to me is that you can call in some unexpected unexpected new connections that uh, can help you maybe accomplish some sort of important goal in your life, the three of coins here. This could also be um, just people who have your best interests at heart, who are gonna help you build your future in some way. But the tower here is about kind of just, um, you know, that, that unexpected, this chance encounters, just the universe bringing uh, divine appointments into your life, the unexpected nature of it. But the unexpected nature, the unexpected, you know, rendezvous or serendipitous meeting will happen because you have already opened your heart to it. Okay. All right. 
interesting energies there. Gemini. All right, let's keep going. Let's allow Ariel to stretch. Very important in a cat's life. All right, let's see. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got. Let's continue on. Gemini. Gemini. Let's see what's next for you. Gemini. Okay. The Wastelands. Oh my goodness. What is this going on here, Gemini? Sustainability. Slow down. Tend to your garden. Oh, look at these metaphors. Look at these cards we're getting about taking care of your heart space. Slowing down, seeing what's going on with you internally. Um, tend to your garden. Tend to those seven of cups. Tend to those dreams. So we have wastelands. We have blame game. All right. So there's something shifting about that energy for you in the year ahead. No more of these unproductive relationships, unproductive connections, uh, unproductive activities. You're taking responsibility for your life in a new way. Like you are, you know, not going to have this situation in your life anymore. All right. You are going to tend to your garden. You're going to tend to your seven of cups, page of cups, the creative endeavors, the bucket list endeavors, the things that you really want to be doing. Okay. So, and again, going back to this focus on what's bringing you joy. All right. So very, very interesting here how these energies are corroborating. Okay, let's continue. That was my chair making that noise. <laughs> Not Ariel. Okay, let's see. Let's continue with our next deck, Gemini. All right, let's see what we have for you. This is our beautiful hummingbird deck. Gorgeous. Iridescence. Oh, I love that. Let your true color sparkle, glimmer, and glow for all to see. Show up and shine, Gemini. Iridescence. This glittering, beautiful, joyful presence that you can be in the world. Wow. Let your true color sparkle, glimmer, and glow for all to see. Beautiful. All right, let's keep going. Gemini. What do we need to know for the Geminis? Gemini. Okay, we have some justice going on here. The universe executes a precise order of justice. Karmic debt is being reconciled at this moment. The matter is no longer in your hands. Take a deep breath and go through it. Oh, wow. All right, we got to clarify that one. That's intense. Now, of course, justice in the tarot can be Libra energy. So this may have something to do with a Libra. This may also have something to do with your fifth house, which is love, romance, creativity, children, entrepreneurial activities, taking a risk, etc. Right? Okay, so it could be something like that. This could involve something, of course, with some sort of legal matter. But as the card says, it's a karmic debt that's being taken care of. You don't have to do anything about it. The matter's no longer in your hands. So let's see what we need to know about that. T just take a deep breath and go through it, whatever it might be. Maybe you're releasing it. Maybe you're just accepting that the situation is what it is. Could be both things. Let's see what we have. A page of cups again, and I just shuffled. Oh, and the wheel. Let's keep going. I feel like I need another one. Wow. Okay, could be with an Aquarius. Wow. Okay, so two major arcanas coming up here. Again, this could have something to do with your career. It's very possible with the Pisces energy coming up. Um, we have the wheel turning. The wheel uh, is Jupiter energy. Jupiter is going to be in Aries. He has been in Pisces. He's going to be going direct um, in Pisces. He'll be, as of this reading, in about a few days. Um, I'm making this November 18th. In about a, five days, he's going to be going direct in Pisces again. He will be back in Aries, your 11th house of hopes and wishes and dreams. Um, 
as of December 20th, and he will spend time in Aries until May 15th, 2023. So, and we have the star card here, the Aquarian energy, which is your ninth house of the big picture perspective of your life. So I feel like because the Pisces energy showed up first, we already had this card. We have some things, energies, you know, going on about your career that we've already seen. Uh, I feel like that, again, you're going to see very clearly the wheel turn to bring justice to your career life in some way and bring a healing. And I read the star card also as a destiny energy. Bring you some sort of new destiny for your career. This could be a new opportunity, a new assignment, a new client, a new um, opportunity to bring your star <laughs> in front of the public in some way your star could be rising high in the year ahead but this is this is the jupiter this is the opportunity energy so again it's brought by the universe it's out of your hands all you have to do once again is just show up with joy the pisces energy here the energies that we just looked at in that other card um and keep the faith that is also a very pisces energy uh so Justice will be served. If there has been something held up in your career, if there has been something where you got the short end of the stick in your career, you were looked over or whatever, the universe is going to right this wrong. It's going to fix it for you, right? But know your part in it as well. And we know part of your part of it, that was good English, part of your part of it, Gemini, is that you don't show up with the blame game like we just looked at before. And also you do not settle there's Ariel sitting on that. You do not settle for less than or being in some sort of wasteland situation. Maybe, again, this has already happened. You, you felt like maybe your career situation has been in a wasteland. The justice, this justice energy, and this beautiful wheel card is going to fix that and heal that and bring some sort of new opportunity for you. All right, but it's out of your hands, right? In the sense that, that you know, sometimes situations manifest in exactly that way yes they're out of our hands we do our part and then we have to let go detach and trust that's what i feel is going on here for you all right so wow very interesting interesting energies there gemini all right let's continue let's continue onward okay next one gemini we have here wow we have the forgiver this is so interesting affirmation i forgive myself and others with compassion for our human frailties mm. now as i've said forgiveness is a very personal uh endeavor so nobody should tell you how to forgive when to forgive who to forgive any of that that is up to you but this again suggests i feel like the most important thing going on here is i forgive myself I forgive myself and others with compassion for our human frailties. So if there has been something where, yes, you've, you've been doing the blame game, you've been kind of settling for less than, and you're, you're now like you're beating yourself up about it. No, stop it. Okay. Don't beat yourself up over it. Forgive yourself. Open your heart light. Remember, we just had that card as well. Let your heart light be open. Know that better situations are on their way for you. All right. So no more beating yourself up. Forgive yourself. All right, let's continue. Gemini. Ariel's really concentrating. We have Earth Star Activation, Anchoring, Grounded Action, and Isis Energy. Wow. Wow. Anchoring, Grounded Action, Isis Energy. Well, this is interesting. The Grounded Action part because that ties into me, ties in for me with that Saturn energy that we just looked at uh, with your crystal card that we got and the second card we had about doing things with joy. Um, so that, that crystal will really help you with this grounded action, taking grounded action, having your feet on the ground. It's all well and good to have the seven of cups like you had before, right? And have that bucket list, have that creative visualization and those dreams and desires. But dreams require action. There has to be inspired action to make them happen in the world. So 
you got to have your feet on the ground. So anchoring into what you truly want and having your feet on the ground and doing the work Saturn to make it happen. So that's going to be especially important for the your year ahead. Now, that's not to say you haven't been doing work or you, you know, or anything. I'm sure you have, but we're just reading the energies with this particular card for the year ahead. And grounded action. So what that says to me with my Saturn Capricorn energy is that, yes, checklists, your to-do list, your checklist, everything, like you got it under control, like you know exactly what you're doing. Um, you know, some sort of grounding in the physical realm. And I think action steps and lists can work very well. It's very Saturn. It's very, very Saturn to do that. Um because sometimes, because you're mutable and because you're mu ruled by Mercury, sometimes it's just there's just so much like information coming in and there's just things you're sifting through and all that's well and good. But can that sometimes uh, clutter up your your uh, energy toward taking action? Right. So. You get my point with all that. All right, let's keep going. Really using your Saturn, using Saturn energy in the year ahead is going to be helpful for you. Discipline, lists, grounded action. Now Ariel's laying all over your cards, so I will not be able to continue to pull them and reference them. <laughs> okay. She's all over them, Gemini. All right, let's see. Let's continue here. All right, we got this one. All right, we have weight. Don't rush into action right now. Bide your time for better results. Okay, so let's see what we need to know about that. I would say, yes, this is important to know, especially if you're watching this now. Yes, this is a reading for 2023, but the first two weeks of 2023, Mars will be retrograde in your sign. So this may be speaking to that energy. You don't want to be rushing into something, especially when uh, we have Mars which represents our energy and the way we get things done and how we go after our desires. You don't want to be uh, trying to make things happen when Mars is retrograde, especially in your sign. So let's see what we need to know about that. Now, it could, of course, apply to some other situation in your life where you don't want to be rushing in. So let's see what that might be. Let's see if we can see what that situation might be. little bit more all right gemini page of swords and the knight of wands okay so knight of wands is a rushing energy <laughs> and then we have the page of swords which can be about gathering more information so there is going to be a piece of intel there's going to be a piece of information that uh is going to come in for you and then you can move forward with lots of passionate enthusiasm so you may not have all the facts. Jupiter, I mean, Jupiter, Mercury will also be retrograde in Capricorn until I think January 19th, I want to say, of 2023. So again, <laughs> this may speak to that energy of just waiting for the right information to come in um, before you start uh, madly dashing, dashing ahead. Um, but there is something. Notice how she has all this orange and we pulled this Knight of Wands, which has a lot of orange. So I feel like there is going to be something where um, you are going to be passionately moving toward toward some sort of new and exciting goal. It could be something with, involving travel. It could be something involving your business, a creative pursuit, something like that. It could be some sort of new intimate relationship. That's possible with the Knight of Wands here. Um, but it is going to serve you well to bide your time to wait because there is something else you're going to find out and because your energy is coming up here with the swords it's going to be something to your benefit okay so just take your time um and it could have something to do with having also exploratory conversations with someone to find out the information you need before you forge ahead with it now this is not anything bad or anything but this is just saying, like, make sure you're sure and that you have a critical piece of information that could prove very important for you to know about before you get involved. Because whatever this is, is going to move fast and you're not going to have time to say, wait, hold up, wait a minute, I need to go find out something else. 
<laughs> You're not going to be able to do that. All right. So find out before you start getting involved in something. It's going to move fast. It'll be a fast, accelerated situation. All right. Let's continue. Gemini. Ooh, this is very interesting. Prophets and ancient seers. Decisions and predictive guidance. Okay, wow. So let's, we're going to have to clarify this one. You're getting a lot that you're going to have. I have to clarify here, Gemini, I feel. So some of you may be really getting involved with oracle decks, tarot cards, uh, you know, psychic work. Uh, in the year ahead, maybe you're going to be watching my YouTube channel quite a lot. <laughs> maybe that's something like that. Um, but this also suggests to me that there is likely to be a very big decision ahead for you in 2023 that you may need some outside assistance with making. All right. Somebody, again, that you trust uh, to help guide you through this decision making process. And it could be somebody who has the gift. I mean, I think we all have the gift. Some of us are just more attuned to it than others. That's my belief. All right. But I feel like, you know, tuning in with your spirit guides, getting advice from a trusted intuitive source would be helpful for you. Some sort of big decision. Gemini. Oh, yeah. Wow. Eight of Cups. And the seven of coins. All right, I feel this is slightly inconclusive. Let's pull one more. Oh, gorgeous. Okay. Could be with a Leo. That's possible. Um, but this is also your third house of communication. Writing, speaking, networking, teaching, sales, all of that type of thing. But this is also the ultimate happiness card. So really what we're looking at here, this, this big decision... Could, can bring you a lot of happiness. Like you're really considering, and it's a major arcana, so you're probably considering some sort of major life change that can bring you happiness. Uh, it involves, though, you leaving something emotionally behind. This could be, you know, it could be a relationship, a job, a home. There's, there's some sort of leave-taking going on here. Um, and you are wondering, oh my gosh, like, I don't know, is this the right thing? So this is a lot of assessment. All right, this is okay. I've perhaps grown as far as I could grow in this particular relationship situation. Does that situation still have more growth potential or does it not? Is my heart still really into it or is it not? Interesting, we had the Seven of Cups before. Now we're getting a Seven of Pentacles. So sevens often represent relationships for me. This I think of the seventh house of the astrological wheel. So indeed, and with this romance card, the sun card, there could be something with a personal relationship evaluating, you know, stay or go or what do I do? But also remember it's a general reading. It could be some other area of your life as well. So this person will really help you make that assessment so that you feel like, and this is the heart card. Again, you feel in your heart, you've made the right decision because this is big. This is big and it, it's going to involve some emotional stuff going on here. Okay. With this eight of cups. So interesting, interesting energies there. But with the sun card, it suggests to me, you know, you will find your way and you will find your place in the sun and you will make the right decision for yourself. You just need somebody to help you sort through, you know, what you're going to be doing with that. Okay, that's all. All right, let's continue. I mean, it can even be the type of thing where maybe you're going to seek out somebody who can help you. If you want to manifest love in your world uh, and it hasn't worked so far, maybe you're going to seek out the advice of somebody who can help you with, uh, you know, a matchmaker or dating techniques or, you know, whatever to help you find that person in your life. So that's possible, too. All right, let's see our next one. The Cosmic Enchantress Wishcraft. I attract a steady flow of abundance. Ooh, -hoo, I love that. This is the star Alcyon, A-A-L-C-Y-O-N-E. The cosmic, and then look, another number seven. 
Hmm. Interesting. Something about the number seven is going to be important for you in the year ahead. Could be July, right? That's possible. Number seven, important, important for Gemini in the year ahead. Wishcraft. I attract a steady flow of abundance. That is a good mantra for you in the year ahead. And also, you know, you got that card about joy and following your joy, etc. being inspired by joy. And we know that joy creates abundance. So going to happen for you. Follow, keep following your joy in the year ahead and have that discipline and that grounded action and you will get your abundance, Gemini. All right, let's continue. I have room on my desk for all this stuff. Okay. Oh, look, you got hummingbird again, which to me is a very Gemini energy because it's about the throat chakra. The more energy and intention I bring to my faith, the more fearless and free I am. Oh, isn't that beautiful? I think definitely hummingbird is a totem for you. I am going to pull a separate animal wisdom card, but I think hummingbird for you in the year ahead for sure. Okay, the more energy and intention I bring to my faith, the more fearless and free I am. Beautiful. All right, let's continue. Gemini. We have some healing going on. Now is a time for you to give or receive healing. Everyone has a natural ability to heal others. Yes, even you. And yes, we also have natural abilities to heal ourselves as well. So lots of healing going on for you. We know that too, right? With the star card that we had before as well and the wheel. Now I said that was probably in relation to your career, um, but there definitely is something that is being healed, karmically healed in your life in the year ahead. All right, let's continue. Focusing on your healing, especially healing situations that have been keeping you stuck in the wasteland, that card we had before, like getting out of that. rattlesnake. The experiences that you're presently going through are an initiation into fulfilling your purpose as a healer. Are you kidding me? And we just got this. Okay. So some of you, yes, perhaps are going to be embarking on some sort of healing path ahead for yourselves. Maybe you already do it as a business. Maybe you're going to be taking it to the next level level or deepening that practice. Some of you, you may be starting some sort of new healing practice, maybe for yourself, but also could be, uh, you know, maybe a, a new business that you start. Uh, you finally open up your Reiki practice or your essential oils practice or your energy work practice, chakra. I mean, whatever you do, right? Something here where you're going to finally, finally do that. And also snakes are about transformation. They're, they are about shedding one identity, one skin, <laughs> and uh, embracing another one. So you're going to be really having an identity shift as well into this new role of bringing more healing to your life and to other people's lives. So there may be something here too, if this is more about something shifting about your own identity and healing, um, you know, you're going, you are going through some sort of major metamorphosis and some big decision may be on the table with that major metamorphosis and change in your life because we just had that energy also making that decision. And the sun is a very nice card with healing as well that we just had. So, and we had also the star before too. So there is this energy of positive healing in going on in your life and making choices that really enhance, um, this, this new identity for yourself of letting old baggages go, old hurts go, old karmic justice, your know, karmic junk go, that type of thing. So I feel like so far there's simultaneously a clear out and, and recognition that some things have healed and shifted and also this kind of rebirth, especially with your heart space energy. So it's very, very interesting. All right, let's keep going. Gemini. Right. Let's see. 
Universal flow. Wow, we just had a card about abundance. Now we have universal flow. It is time for you to slow down, breathe, and take time to smell the roses. Wow. And we had that weight card before. And we also had that wasteland card, which was about, again, like watering your own garden. So, and look, another number seven. What is going on here with these seventh Gemini? So I would say July, maybe when this energy is coming into play for you. Um, this could just be a vacation that you need to take. Um, you know, and that that Knight of Wands card that we had with um, with the weight card and the Page of Swords, that can also be about some sort of travel. So it may be important for you in July to schedule in some R and R time, some uh, you know travel to just relax, not to be all busy, go getty, go getty. That was good, good English, go gettery, like rah rah, like go you know run around everywhere, but really to just. Um, you know, sink deep into a place and just chill. You can still, of course, have your fingertips on whatever, you know, pulses you need to have your fingertips on, you know, Gemini, how you are, but also to really allow yourself to just decompress and relax and enjoy. And I just get the sense of not like running hither and thither. I mean, you can still be, have an active vacation, but just not one that's like a whirlwind but really allowing yourself to step into the flow of beauty, slow down, breathe, and take time to smell the roses. Yeah, I feel July for that for you. All right, oops, got half the other deck here. All right, let's continue. We have the number nine and we have completion. Not surprised to see that, we had that karmic justice card before. So there is some sort of important karmic contract that is being wrapped up for you in the year ahead. We've already discussed that. This to me corroborates that energy that we had. All right, let's keep going. With the number nine, maybe it's happening in September. That's possible. Maybe on the ninth of the month, the 19th or the 29th. Let's continue. Gemini. We have an animal. Ooh. Embrace your wild side. Ooh, Gemini. <laughs> Embrace your wild side. Open that heart space. Let yourself uh, feel and be free. And uh, wow. And look, the bird has a heart there. The bird is bringing a heart. There's gonna be there's gonna be something very interesting where to do with uh, your heart space. I'm telling you, in the year ahead, uh, feeling just more excited, freedom loving, joy in your heart, uh, having adventures, opening up your you know heart space, healing your heart chakra, all of that type of thing. There may be with the animal showing up here. There may be some new animal also coming into your world in the year ahead as well. All right, let's keep going. Gemini. Embrace your wild side. Oh, and now we have the full moon in Leo. <laughs> Don't let pride get in your way. All right, so we read, do read everything as metaphors. So, um, you know, you could be holding on to pride. There could be somebody in your world who is very prideful and their stubbornness and pride is getting in the way of, of some connection or some situation between the two of you. So that's possible. So it doesn't mean necessarily mean your pride, but it could be somebody around you, possibly a Leo. Uh, the full moon in Leo takes place in Aquarius season. So this would be happening... Um, you know, at the end, uh, it, this, this would be happening actually in February because the new moon in Aquarius is on um, January 22nd. That's a fabulous new moon, by the way, um, 2023. So that means the full moon would be two weeks after that, the full moon in Leo. So that is a time marker for that time. So just be aware of somebody maybe, you know, being stubborn, trying to get you to do something that you don't want to do or or somebody who has certain ideas about how things should go and you're not on board or, you know, so just be alert around that time period for that type of energy to maybe manifest. Okay. All right, let's see. Let's keep going. Okay. 
Ooh, this is beautiful. Spiritual alignment puts my manifestation into motion. Look at the sun that's on this card. And we had the sun card before as well. <laughs> so I think there's going to be some sort of really, uh, really beautiful wish manifesting for you in the year ahead. And the sun is, of course, our heart space, but our Leo energy, but also this sense of goals and pride and what we feel good about accomplishing. So there's there's going to be something going on with that. Um, and spiritual alignment puts my manifestation into motion. So remember, it's not just about money. You're going to get your abundance. I mean, we had abundance energies come out in this reading already, as we know. It's about that joy, that second card that we had. It's about the joy and being spiritually aligned with your joy. That is going to make your manifestations happen and bring you a lot of abundance and satisfaction. All right. So spiritual alignment. What does that mean for you? Let me know in the comments. Okay. It means walking your talk, really. Right. You can't have cognitive dissonance. You know, for example, if you say you want a relationship, yet, you know, you're still harboring uh, ill thoughts about your ex and you're still not going out there and wanting to meet people, well, then you're not in spiritual alignment. That's cognitive dissonance. You say you want something, but your actions are not matching and your vibration is not matching either. So you know what I'm saying, Gemini. All right, let's see our next one. Ooh, look at this. We have the number nine. And we have Uranus genius. Genius. Well, you are a genius. Uranus is in Taurus, which is your 12th house of things hidden behind the scenes. So uh, this suggests to me that you are likely to get some sort of eureka ideas in sleep, in dreams, uh, when you're spending time alone, 12th house, you know, kind of just hanging out by yourself and just doing your thing. Uranus may pop in unexpectedly with some sort of interesting uh, creative downloads for you. Um, genius breakthrough ideas in sharing, in sharing yourself with the world and how to do that, your talents and capabilities. Um, wow. This also could be, because we had the tower card before in the reading, there also could be something here where you may meet a genius. OK, so you may meet somebody who's intellectually at the same level or a little beyond from you. And Gemini's are so freaking smart. Like you guys often don't meet people on your same like mental wavelength, mental caliber. Uh, so that's another way to look at this energy that you may indeed meet somebody who, uh, you know, you're just so surprised you have that mental, that, that lightning fast mental connection with that particular person. Uranus is also about inventions. So some of you may be working on an invention behind the scenes, coming up with something brand new. It doesn't have to be a conventional invention, like a brand new you know, piece of equipment or something. It could just be you're also inventing some brand new way to uh, you know, write poetry or brand new way to uh, play music. I mean, whatever it might be, there, there could be something that you are you know, being an inventor of, but it may be something where you're still kind of have to keep it a little behind the scenes because Uranus is in that 12th house. And maybe it's something that may may take some work over the next couple of years until Uranus actually gets into Gemini, which won't be for a while yet. All right. So that's that's possible. But very interesting. There are lots of breakthrough ideas coming up, bubbling up from the subconscious for you. All right. And let's continue. All right, Gemini. Oh, 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 well, we got to clarify this. All right, so we got some passion going on for you. I do feel that some of you are really, if you want a relationship with all these number, number sevens that have popped in the reading, some of these other things, if you work toward healing, if you're still stuck in some situation of energies from your past in terms of relationship stuff, if you work toward healing that, like getting rid of the blame game, you know, et cetera, the things we've already talked about, I do feel you're going to call in a new relationship in the year ahead. Absolutely. But the passion card could also be 
passion for an activity, a job, a travel experience, a friendship, you know, a new animal in your life. All right, let's see what we got. The High Priestess, the Wheel, the Eight of Wands. Okay. Eight of Wands, Leo energy, the Wheel of Fortune showing up. So likely, if you have been alone for a while, probably the last couple years, the High Priestess here, um, you're like a hidden treasure, hidden away. <laughs> High Priestess, you, you're just, you know, all right, I'm doing my thing. I'm biding my time. I'm, you know, I'm okay, but you know, maybe I'm a little bored. I'm a little lonely, whatever. We'll get ready for your your world to get really rocked. Um, I feel like this is likely to happen when Jupiter is transiting through Aries because of this fire energy that's showing up here, the Leo energy, the Eight of Wands. So um, I would say after Aquarius season, so from the end of February through to the middle of May, could be your best time for putting yourself out there. And there may be opportunities that come to you to start getting out there and socializing a lot more with this wheel, like the invitations that come out of the blue. Um, and a lot of them with this eight of wands here. So um, that you'll feel excited about, that you could meet somebody that you could have a partnership with, some sort of passionate connection. Um, this suggests to me also that, again, you got to get out of the house. This high priestess is just, you know, she's been hidden away. So when the universe knocks on your door with some invitations to get out there, and a lot of them, here's this eight of wands. Um, it's, it's incumbent upon you to say yes and to just see what they're all about so that, and yes, they, sh they probably need to be ones that you feel excited about passion, but they could lead to some exciting new connections, uh, lots of creativity, um, just groups of people who are like creatively inspired. Maybe that's how you're going to meet this genius person. Um, you know, but there's going to be a lot of very interesting invitations that are going to be headed your way. And, um, they're going to make you feel good. Everybody's going to be like, where have you been? <laughs> You're going to be like, well, I've just been working on some stuff in private. <laughs> the high priestess. You know what I mean? So you're like this, like, I feel like you're this just like hidden treasure that nobody knows about right now. And it's like, you're making a debut. It's like you're, you're a debutante. You're making your social debut, um, you know, in Pisces and Aries and part of Taurus season. And it's the springtime debut of, <laughs> of Gemini. Like, where have you been? I think it's fantastic. And really you could be meeting somebody, particularly a Leo. It's very possible. Um, where they're going to be just infatuated with you. So, and you with them. So very nice energies here, but you got to get out of the house and there's no excuses, right? There's going to be plenty of opportunities to do that. And that eight of wands, things, just a lot of activity, a lot of things moving fast and, and feeling just part of life again, that passionate life force energy, like you're back. I'm back, baby, right? That's, that's like the energy I'm picking up here also. All right, let's see what else we got. Gemini. Ariel is doing her nails on the sofa. She's all excited for you. She does that when she's really happy. So she's feeling the vibe of the energies for you. All right, that one fell out, so we're going to take it. Ooh, look at this and with the heart. The blessing of endless possibility. Allow your inner child to be the master for a while and don't take things too seriously. Because I feel like, yeah, we have had some serious energies that have come out in this reading, haven't we? But like I said, I feel like you're metamorphosizing and getting, you know, past those things. Have fun and explore the world of endless possibility. Something wonderful is created through imagination and innocence. That's that page of cups also. Wow. I want to read this one more time, Gemini, because this is so appropriate for the energies that we just had also. The blessing of endless possibility. Allow your inner child to be the master for a while and don't take things too seriously. Have fun and explore the world of endless possibilities. I would also say wild possibilities. 
Something wonderful is created through imagination and innocence. Wow. I love this for you, Gemini. Wow, wow, wow. All right. Well, <laughs> there you have it. 23 Oracle cards for your 2023 year ahead. Please leave me a comment. Let me know what you are looking forward to in 2023. What dreams you want to manifest, uh, what energies you especially want to have uh, you know, work for you in the year ahead. I would, I just would love to hear. Okay. I love you guys. Take care. And Ariel and I will see you again soon. Stella Wild signing out.